Madam Speaker, I supported the Tax Cut and Jobs Act because as a former small business owner, I know the immense challenge that the complex tax code can present on business owners, workers, and families alike. When H.R. 1 was signed into law, it opened the door to a new era of prosperity for Colorado and for our country, and the evidence is all around us. We've already seen over one million jobs created. Hundreds of companies have contributed four billion in bonuses, impacting over four million workers. The unemployment rate is at its lowest level that we've seen in a half of century, and small business optimism has hit an all-time high. In Alamosa, Colorado, a small town in my district, tax reform has helped First Southwest Bank stay in town and provide financial service products to its community, a key driver of economic growth and success in smaller towns around the country. As CEO Ken Curtis said after the passage of tax reform, he noted, we're excited to take advantage of the tax reform and give the positive impact it has on First Southwest Bank right back to our team members and rural Colorado. By being able to provide higher living wages to our community, being able to provide higher living wages to our starting employees, and to invest in our team, we can be a catalyst for economic growth and reaffirm our commitment to a better quality of life in all of rural Colorado communities of our branches served. First Southwest Bank has raised its starting wage to $14 an hour plus full benefits, a major success for a small community in Southwest Colorado. It's exactly businesses like this who are committed to their communities and to their neighbors that this historic tax reform package was intended to help. Increased wages, along with changes to the tax bracket and the standard deduction, means Coloradoans across the 3rd District have higher earning potential and can keep more of their hard-earned money, which spells economic growth. These improvements could help families take a vacation to one of our beloved national parks, put a down payment on a new car or a home, or to be able to pay medical expenses. Madam Speaker, the effects of this monumental tax reform effort are felt right here at home. And I'm proud of the Coloradoans who are working hard to be able to improve their lives because of the opportunity this legislation has presented. If I may, I'd like to just be able to give you one personal story. I was in my hometown, had the opportunity to be able to go to a local restaurant, and the young lady who is a server has two children. She went out of her way to come up and tell me that the $50 to $60 per week that she is getting in her paycheck is making a real difference in her family's life. I told her there's better news actually coming, because when she gets ready to file those taxes this coming April 15th, she's going to find that her personal exemption is doubled, that for her children, that child tax credit that she's counted on has doubled as well, putting more resources back into the pockets of the people who earn that money. As my colleague from Arizona, Mr. Swiker, pointed out, when we put those resources back to work, back to work in that American economy, we find that it yields what many of our colleagues on the left would like to see more of, tax revenues coming into the government to be able to provide some of the essential services that we all know that we need. But we need to be the country that is creating that fertile soil to be able to grow businesses, to be able to create opportunity for the future, and to be able to deliver on that promise for the American dream for all of our children. This is a program, a policy, which works on behalf of the American people. Thank you for this time, and I yield back to my colleague from Arizona.